Hey guys, my name is Jeff, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create your own homemade foam party soap. This project is pretty simple, and I'm going to take you through it step by step. So now we're going to cut back to the studio in 3, 2, 1. Hey guys, welcome back to the studio. In front of me I have everything that I need to create a batch of homemade foam soap. The soap used at a foam party is a very basic form of liquid soap. We're going to create liquid soap today using the hot process soap making method. The recipe we're going to make today makes about 1.5 gallons of concentrated foam soap. The only ingredients are water, potassium hydroxide, and coconut oil. You can check out the recipe in the description below. As for equipment needed, you'll probably have a lot of this stuff laying around your house, but keep in mind that once you use it to make soap, you're probably not going to want to use it for food again. I have a 7 quart slow cooker, a digital food scale, a stick blender, plastic cookware, like a large mixing spoon, forks, knives, and a smaller spoon to get the uh, oil out of the container. For the scale, I like to use solo cups to measure the weight because uh, I don't have to worry about cleaning them out and I can throw them out later. You're going to need a large measuring cup, a container to mix water and uh, potassium hydroxide in, paper towels, and it comes in handy for me, you're going to want a uh, calculator, which I'm using this old phone for. And that's about it for the equipment, you guys. I'll put a list of all this stuff in the description below as well. Alright guys, first step to making our foam soap, we're going to go ahead and start by measuring out the oils. Before we do this, we're going to turn our slow cooker onto high so that it starts getting heated up. We're going to weigh out our coconut oil first, and this recipe calls for 1,440 grams of coconut oil. So here we go. Alright, that's all our coconut oil in. Hopefully, y'all can see that. Now, we're gonna go ahead and measure out our water, and uh, we're gonna do it the same way, but instead of pouring it into the pot, we're gonna pour it into a, a separate container. So, here we go. I'm gonna use this, this see through cup just to do it, and make sure you use distilled water. If you use anything else, uh, it will not work very well. This recipe calls for 547.2 grams. So here we go. We got our water all measured out. Next part, we're gonna go ahead and measure out our lye. So you're gonna need your uh, safety goggles on. And uh, we're gonna use the two more solo cups for that. For the lye, we're gonna need 411 grams. We're using potassium hydroxide for liquid soap. So make sure it says potassium hydroxide or it will not work. Here we go. Make sure you use a fresh cup when you're doing the lye because if uh, you have any moisture in there, it'll start reacting with it and you definitely don't want that inside your house. If you go too far, you're going to have to pour it back, so uh, don't do what I do. And now y'all are going to come with me outside because you we need to mix the lye with the water we measured out, but you do not want to do it indoors because it puts off some pretty nasty fumes. So I'll see y'all outside in just one sec. Alright, we're outside now. We're going to go ahead and mix the, uh, the lye that we measured out with the water that we measured. And uh, remember, it puts out a lot of fumes. It also gets really hot. So uh, be careful you don't burn yourself, both chemically or physically. All right, here we go. I'm gonna stand up though so my face isn't right next to it, <laughs> but yeah. Make sure you get it all out, all the little pieces. Pour in the second one. Give it a stir. I don't know if y'all can hear that at home, but it, uh, it also melted my knife. I'm gonna step away because it's uh, putting out the beams. Once you've mixed them together a little bit and let it go ahead and off gas all it's going to, wait until the solution turns clear, and then we can take it back inside and add it to our oils and get the soap process started. We're back in from outside. I got our water and lye here, and it looks like our oils have completely melted. And a good rule of thumb is to wait until the oils feel about the same amount of heat as the water does. 
and then you can get started. So it seems like we're at that point now, so we're going to go ahead and get going. This is where all the magic happens. What we're going to do is add the lye water to the coconut oil, and then we're going to use the stick blender to blend it for about five minutes. And after that, we're going to put the lid on it and just let it cook for another like 15 to 20 minutes before we come back and check on it. And uh, you'll see it, it transforms quite a bit. All right, well, without any further delay, I think, I think we're gonna get started. Make sure you pour this slowly. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty dangerous still if it splashes on you. Make sure we get it all in there. Now watch this, you guys. It's about to change colors. You're gonna go ahead and stick blender it like this for about five minutes. It's probably a good idea to set a timer. You wanna just make sure it gets all nice and, and incorporated. Doesn't have to be continuous stick blending, but you know, just uh, pulse it every now and then. minutes you guys so we're gonna go ahead and take the stick blender out we got the pot back on just let it sit and do its thing I started a timer for three and a half hours which is gonna be our total cook time but in about 10 or 15 minutes we're gonna come back and check on this and give it a stir again and uh, we'll, we'll see how it looks then all right it's been about 10 minutes so we're gonna just check on our progress here I'm gonna give it a little stir Oh uh, yeah, we're uh, we're almost at the next part. We're at the part where it looks like it's totally broken up. I didn't actually need to stir it yet, but I just kind of wanted to show y'all uh, what it looks like. All right, we're gonna put the lid back on and come check on it again in another 10 to 15 minutes, and hopefully we'll be on to the next part where it turns into almost a solid paste. But uh, y'all y'all see. It's been about 20 minutes since we uh, first put the water in. But you definitely want to give it a stir. All right, we're gonna check back on it in another 10 minutes and see where we're at. Hey guys, Jeff here. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I needed to tell you that at this point you're gonna to need to turn the slow cooker down to the low setting. I forgot to do it when I was making the soap just now, and y'all are about to see what happens if you put too much heat into your soap mixture. All right, we're gonna go back and you're gonna see how it went. And uh, yeah, you can laugh at me all you want. It's been about 40 minutes since we set our timer. And uh, this is what our uh, mixture is looking like now. It's sorta apple saucy. Your, uh, your batch might become this faster or possibly slower depending on just uh, how much heat your, your uh, slow cooker can put out. Definitely a lot of air in the mixture, it's puffed up quite a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the crock pot to low because it looks like we're getting it a little too hot. Keep it on low, that's the difference, I think. It looks like it's starting to cool down now. It's about to go, about to go solid on us. And then I'm gonna try to mix this other crap back in. So what happened there was what we call a soap volcano. 
and it's what happens when you put too much heat into your soap mixture while it's cooking. We could have avoided this by remembering to turn our slow cooker back down to low after the first 15 to 20 minutes of cooking. This is actually the first time it's ever happened to me in uh, about the seven batches of soap that I've made so far. So hopefully it doesn't happen to you, but uh, if it does, just know it's not the end of the world. I was able to actually pick up a lot of the soap paste that had fallen out and throw it back into the slow cooker real quick and was able to continue with the batch. And as you'll see, we had a successful soap mixture at the end of the day. All right, I'll stop interrupting the video. We'll get right back to it. Keep watching, thanks. We are about an hour and a half in. And we're just giving this a quick stir. It's looking really good. Looking like soap paste. And then we're gonna let it sit again for another uh, probably 30 to 40 minutes and then check on it. But everything looks great now, despite our, uh, despite our mess earlier. It's been about three hours and 15 minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and check out this soap now, because it's probably just about done. There we go. Sure looks like soap paste to me. Now the, uh, this stuff's pretty liquidy this time, but uh, the consistency will vary on you quite a bit. This is probably the uh, 6th or 7th batch of soap I've made at this point. And uh, sometimes, it's, sometimes it's like pasty like this, but sometimes it's like rock solid and you're breaking it up with with you know knives and whatever you got whatever you got on you but uh this one's coming out real good i think it's because the heat is still a little higher from earlier depending on the temperature your slow cooker you know operates at you may have a slightly more solid or more liquidy uh final result here we're gonna give this another uh another 15 minutes at the 3 hour and 30 minute mark, we're going to go ahead and start adding our distilled water to dilute this and turn it from a paste into a liquid. Once the soap's done cooking after about 3 hours and 30 minutes, it'll be time to get out your large measuring cup because we're going to measure out the water we're going to add to it to turn this soap from a paste into a liquid. We're going to do it by adding 14 cups of distilled water to our mixture. Remember to heat up your water to boiling point before you add it to a hot crock pot or else the crock pot might break from thermal shock. I just use the microwave to heat up about four cups at a time and just put it in, but if you, have a, if you want to do it on the stove all at once or if you want to you know, do it some other way, that is entirely up to you. But just uh, make sure you don't crack the stone of the slow cooker. But all right, here we go. We're gonna, I'm gonna do four cups at a time until I reach our target 14 cups for this recipe. And once you started adding the water, go ahead and churn your crock pot down to warm. And we're gonna just keep adding water until we get to our, uh, our target level. The dilution process takes eight to 12 hours, so it's best to do this overnight. You don't have to stir it or anything, just uh, leave the crock pot on warm with the water in it and it'll, uh, it'll do the rest. I added in 12 cups of water and my seven quart slow cooker is almost full so I'm gonna just let it uh, work with that, and in the morning, if there's still any like chunks that haven't dissolved, then I'll go ahead and add the remaining last two cups. But uh, we want this to be super concentrated, so the less water we add, you know, the more concentrated it'll be. But uh, at a certain point, it, the soap literally won't dissolve anymore into the water, because there's so much already in it. So uh, in the morning, if there's still chunks in it, we're gonna add more water, but hopefully there won't be any. I guess I'll see y'all in about eight hours when hopefully the uh, the process will be complete and we can bottle our soap. It's been about 24 hours now since uh, we started the dilution process on this batch of soap. I added a total of 14 cups of water to it and uh, we're left with this. And as you can see there's a few chunks that just refuse to uh, dilute and it's just because we made a slightly too large a batch for this, for this vessel. But what we're going to do is drain off the finished liquid soap and uh, leave the chunks in there and we'll add more water to that later and uh, melt them down as well. In those 24 hours, I only left the slow cooker on for about eight of them. I just left it to do its own thing for the rest of the time. 
mostly because I don't want to have the slow cooker on when I leave the house. We're going to start adding it to our container and y'all can see what that finished product looks like. At the end of your dilution process, you'll end up with this and you have nice finished soap. Y'all might notice that it's uh, very thin looking, but uh, most commercial soaps actually have artificial thickeners in it where this doesn't. So this is actually just as concentrated, it's just not, it's not thick consistency. There are ways of thickening it, but to me if it's something that it doesn't need, I don't want to add it because I don't want to possibly hinder the amount of foam it could create. I'm going for, you know, the biggest bang for my buck here. But, uh, what I like to do to add it to a container is I ladle it out uh, at a time until it gets to like a manageable level where I can pour it. And I'm actually using this container for this batch. I'm getting ready for a big foam party at the beginning of next month. And this soap will be part of the five gallons I use for that. And so as you can see, that was my last batch we did. We got about a gallon and a half out of that. All right. And that's all of it in there. I am now that much closer to my goal. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helps you out. I plan on making more content soon, so please like and subscribe. Once again, my name is Jeff, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. That's the work the best so far, really. I don't know if you can see me. What's up? That really worked well. So, uh, yeah, can't wait to see it in action at a real party.